like to call this meeting to order. Um, first of all, we'd ask Dr. Boyce to give the invocation, please. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, recognize today that we are now meeting to discuss important issues concerning the citizens in Jacksonville. Provide a help provide us with clarity, understanding, due diligence as we deliberate any of the issues that might come up today. Help us to remember that we are a board needed when the rules and laws, at least in some people's minds, are not considered to be fair or just, and that we need to uh, bridge that gap between the law and what some people might consider to be unjust, and that we can do the very best for, for the citizens of Jacksonville uh, to make them as um, comfortable as they can be regarding these issues. Uh, please bless the staff. They are really hardworking. And the board members are here giving up their time to deliberate uh, and allow us to deliberate openly and freely in this meeting today. In the name of God, amen. 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 First of all, we have a request from Dr. James Boyce to be added to the agenda. I hear a motion. So moved. So, moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 We will mark that under item number three under new business. old business number one is we need to reapprove the august 25th uh 2021 minutes I understand mr jefferson there were some uh, just type topographical errors spelling so forth i hear a motion i move to be accepted with the corrections all in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Passes. Number two is to approve the October 27th, 2021 minutes. And it's, again, the same as the prior few spelling mistakes and so forth. So moved. Got a motion to accept. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. They've both been reapproved. Under new business, Jason, we will start with you and review code and ordinance. Thank you, Chairman. So the, the purpose of this morning, or this afternoon rather, um, is to go over just a brief what you have in your, in your agenda is um, some of the enforcement items that we have from, first of all, uh, the, the municipal code, so the city code of ordinances. Just want to point out uh, that uh, although most of what we do comes from the unified development ordinance, if you look in that page after the after the minutes under the muni code, um, that's where kind of like our police authority is from. Um, I wanted to point out housing code. So if you guys are, are with me, it's, it's at the bottom. It's one of 13 and at the top. It says division six housing code. Everybody there? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So this is this is part of the municipal code where we do. Uh, this is where we find our code for minimum housing, and we we deal with that a lot in code enforcement. Um, so I I put this in here so you guys can so you can review uh, what it is exactly that we do. So from from section five ninety three, that's the purpose. 94, you have definitions of what minimum housing is. And then the rest of it, um, 595, and if you keep flipping through the pages, um, through 505 is, is basically the requirements uh, of minimum housing, the requirements of inspectors, requirements of staff, so on and so forth. And then section 5106 uh, says procedures for enforcement. So this is the part where 
where code enforcement comes in, uh, not only code enforcement staff, but building department staff comes in, um, and we perform a hearing. Uh, it says a procedure after a hearing, uh, failure to comply. And then if you look, if you're with me, section 5106, procedure for, enfor for enforcement. Um, if you go down and find letter D, D right here appeals from the orders of inspector. So if we have a housing issue, a minimum housing issue, and we uh, have a hearing, uh, and at that hearing, the citizen that owns the property um, disagrees with the finalization of that hearing. It actually sh it actually shows in here in the Munico that it, it can go in front of uh, the Board of Adjustment. Actually, it, it shall go in front of the Board of Adjustment. So a lot of, a lot of times when we bring stuff, it's straight from the Unified Development Ordinance, which is our development. But we can also bring it from the Muni Code. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, that that's that that's a possibility uh, maybe here soon uh, if we have somebody that we are um, trying to get them to repair or demolish their their home we do have a, a hearing we have a procedure um, and part of that does include the board of adjustment so um, just 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 for basic knowledge so that you know that it's a possibility that's one of the things out of the Munico that we would bring to you to this board um, so then you flip uh, a couple more pages. We come to the Unified Development Ordinance. <clears throat> uh, the same thing. So Article 8 of the Unified Development Ordinance, that's where we get our code enforcement procedures or any violations found under the Unified Development Ordinance that we're going to bring to this board. So you have 8.1, you have purpose. 8.2, you have compliance. 8.3 is violations. And then this is where we find our, um, our procedures for the board. You said procedures for the board? Which yeah, so if you to? look, yeah. So Dr. Boyce, if you look, 8.5 enforcement generally, you got A, B, C, and D. Yes, sir. 8.5 enforcement generally. Um, it kind of describes our process. We have an investigation of a complaint, okay. and then we have a notice of violation, um, and then we have an administrative hearing. Okay. Um, and then if there's appeal of that decision after that administrative hearing, if you're looking at 8.54, appeal of final determination, uh, that's, how we, that's how we bring it to, that's why we bring it to this board. So that's us. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Yes. Board of Adjustment. <laughs> so that I just wanted to show the board where where this board is generated from, uh, and and where we get our procedures for bringing these cases to the board. And I did have an example today to show from the Muni Code and the UDO. Um, but uh, so basically, uh, if we have an, uh, a violation of the Unified Development Ordinance. What we do is we send out a notice of violation and hearing. And uh, we, typically it's about 30 days. We have a hearing. We, we sit in front of that group and we make, we make a determination after that hearing. And within a certain amount of time after that hearing, they have the, our citizens have the option to appeal the termination of that hearing and present themselves to this board. So that's how we would, we would get here. If we had a case to present, that's how we, that's how we would get here if we so, had a case. Um, excuse me, but I, I'm I'm assuming that uh, before we actually had a meeting, that we would be able to see the minutes from the administrative hearing. Absolutely, so we would have some kind of idea of what happened and what the complaints are in in their total in their totality. That's right. So, once we had our hearing and they appealed to the board, the staff would present um, our results of our findings. Uh, what our investigation showed us, we would also supply uh, the violations from the code that they're infracting. Uh, and then also, uh, whoever is appealing would also provide uh, their side. So that once, and you would get it ahead of time, and you would be able to review both staff and the citizens' presentation. And then, and then go over it during the Board of Adjustment. 
question. Um, yes. If the, the owner of the property is in violation and they can't be here for whatever reason, they live on the next state over, whatever, uh, can they have a, an, an attorney or a representative to take their place? Actually, we've, we've had, uh, recently, we've had some uh, hearings held upstairs um, where there's multiple parties involved. We have, uh, we had one show in person. We had another one arrive uh, and also represent a neighbor uh, with their permission. And then also one of the owners was in California uh, and we invited them to do a Zoom meeting for that meeting. So that, absolutely, they can have a representative uh, here uh, either in person or we've even done it through Zoom. So, absolutely. But that's all. That's all we had for um, for that portion of presenting both the, the Municode and the UDO. Uh, you can, gentlemen are more than welcome to take this this home so you have it. Um, but I know we haven't necessarily gone over where where these cases come to present to you. So I just wanted you to have that so you know where it was originated from. So Jason, the housing code is standalone from the UA, uh, UD, right? Right, so the housing code, there's, there's, there's different things that we do. So the Muni code, again, is, is basically our police authority, our police power, so for the city. Uh, there, are, there are some things within the Muni code that code enforcement enforces. Housing code is one of those things. But that's also where we get our high grass and weeds, uh, our junk vehicles, uh, and things like that. So we do enforce that from the municipal code. Uh, and that has different, different regulations, different, uh, different penalties, different processes. But I just wanted to point out that they do also uh, present in front of the board sometimes. But the bulk of what we do, especially for this board, is out of the Unified Development Ordinance, absolutely. Uh, under new business item number three is Dr. Boyce. Oh, well, thank you, Dave. Um, I'm uh, looking at this sheet that I handed out um, March 23rd from the memo, and I was uh, sort of jesting with Jason a few minutes ago. Jesting with Jason? That's a good Kind of fun. I was testing with Jason saying, well, I wanted to prove to him the least I read it because, David, you wanted us to read it, and that was sort of our, our assigned thing. And so in, in that light, I read some of it. I didn't get through all of it, but I read some of it. <clears throat> and one of the things that I noticed and I read through Section 4 was that um, there were a number of tables and in those tables, if you go through them, uh, you can see that there are uh, zones that are listed. And some of those zones, uh, all, and they're basically listed by way of abbreviations, um, residential zone, and then they had these numbers afterwards. I did talk to a few people around. And um, <clears throat> most people don't understand what the little numbers meant. And then I called Jason, and I said, what does the numbers mean, and he, what the numbers meant? And, of course, I could have read that in Section 3, but in sec and, of course, this is a 490-something page document. <laughs> right. Okay. And it's, and I was talking to uh, Mr. Stewart Gill over there, and uh, he was saying, you, you can't read something like this. And I told him it was kind of like a science book. It's, it's right. not a novel. Yeah. You, you had to go in and use it as a reference. And so I thought that uh, as I went through the tables and I would look at a, an abbreviation for one of the uses and uh, or one of the zones, I couldn't remember from reading in Section 3 what it meant. So then I would have to go dig through Section 3 and look for it to see if... I could find out what it meant exactly. Right. And not only is there an abbreviation, it also has a title. And then it also has a little definition in Section 3 that tells you exactly what it means. And I thought that it might be a good idea that uh, <clears throat> we could put a small 
before all those tables start, I think around on page 192 of that section, if you put a little small table where you could list all of those uh, zones, say what they meant, and then provide a little blurb or two, kind of like a TV guide, a little blurb about what it means, and so that you wouldn't have to go all the way back into section three and then stumble through and try to find it. And I was just going to suggest, of course, I don't think that that's the real job of this committee, but I was just going to suggest that you might want to think about doing that. And if anybody wanted to discuss that, you could. I'm not going to make a motion. Do you want to have a question? Yes. Okay. Okay. And then the other thing that I wanted to just sort of throw out I was reading through uh, Article 4, that's on page uh, 192, um, uh, reading the preliminary information before you get to the tables, <clears throat> and I read this section <clears throat> uh, describing what um, use P means, or what P means, uh, which means permission to do it. Okay. Um, if you see that in a table, basically it says, yeah, that you're permitted to do that in this particular zone, okay? So I read this sentence, and it's one of two sentences, um, and it reads, and I'm just going to read it to you. <clears throat> a P in a cell of the use table indicates that the corresponding use category or use type is allowed by right in the corresponding base zoning district or parallel conditional zoning district subject to compliance with the use specific standards referenced in the final column of the use table and parenthetically and conditions imposed as part of the conditioning or zoning as is applicable. And that's one sentence. That's 60 words. <laughs> and I remember years ago when I took English 101, if I wrote a sentence that had 60 words in it, I flunked. Because a sentence is supposed to be a single thought, and that's a complexity of thoughts. Right. Um, then I did, I, when I talked to Jason just a few minutes ago, I said, you know, it could be that, that, that lawyers must write it that way so somebody can't pull out one little piece, but I would prefer to find something a little easier to read a little easier to understand, and I suggested the following um, ease of reading for clarity, um, which I would probably ex expect if you would want to do that one. There are a whole lot of other ones in here that probably need to be turned into common language that meets the law requirements for the kind of language you need. And so I rewrote it, or just edited it as a suggestion, a P in a cell of the use table indicates a use is allowed in the base or parallel zoning zones. Period. And then I put, there's a little note right there to see what a conditional rezoning, what conditional rezoning may require. Okay, what that is. Then I wrote a second sentence and said the final cell in the corresponding row of cells references a use specific standard which needs to be considered and then just below that i wrote use specific standards are found in section 4.2 of this document on page 201 and i to me that seems simpler and each one of the sentences is a not a complex sentence but a simpler sentence with one idea each so if there's some way you could possibly re-edit in common language versus legal language, it would help people read this document. Absolutely. Well, and I think, I think to add on to uh, what Dr. Boyce is saying, one of the things that we did, so we, for instance, we had uh, what could appear to have been conflicting codes in the Muni Code and the UDO. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, we had animals. We had, we had in the code, in the Muni Code, allowed for farm animals, horses, cows, chickens, things like that. Mm -hmm. and, but although it was allowed, if you look in the Unified Development Ordinance, uh, it was very specific on what mm -hmm. that allowance was. We had a table, we had a chart, we had numbers, we had acreage, but it didn't say that in the Muni Code. It just said that it was allowed. So people would look up the Muni Code not knowing that we had a Unified Development Ordinance because it was only adopted in 2014. And they say, well, I looked up the code and it was allowed, so why am I in trouble? So 
things like that we, we really try to look at you know this this UDO we and we have changed that by the way to refer it to the UDO instead of saying that they're allowed but that was one of the things that we were able to do uh, same with the 160 D changes we did that too so one of the things um, that uh, we're looking at this was this was adopted but this was pulled from other municipalities uh, kind of one big poll of if I don't know how many of you were here when it happened, but this this was not tailored uh, Dotting the I's and crossing the T's specifically to Jacksonville. There are some Things in here that that aren't specific So that's what we're trying to do is is go over it and try to make it specific to Jacksonville But we didn't we didn't write this we adopted it. Um, so yeah, these kind of changes are great there are some things in here that need to be done and and staff is working on getting some of those changes made. And yeah, exactly like Dr. Boyce pointed out, some of this is, is legal verbiage that we wouldn't have the ability to change if we wanted to. But I, yeah, I think uh, offering some, some editing maybe in the front to help explain it because we do refer, especially this one that, that Dr. Boyce is, is referring to, this is most of where code enforcement lives um, as far as how we're going to, um, how we're gonna approach dealing with these violations and where we get them from. So this table lays out whether something is a violation or not. This is what we, this is what we reference, is this table. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's mostly for staff, but absolutely, when we're trying to explain it to a citizen, some of it can be, can be very overwhelming. So I think, I think having a, um, a general statement or some kind of layout in the beginning of the chapter would be a good idea. But again, we're actually going, we're trying to look through the entire UDO to see what changes need to be made so that they don't conflict and then also so that they're a little bit more understandable and tailored to Jacksonville. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any comments or questions about Dr. Boyce? Thank you then, okay. appreciate it. Um, I think that concludes our business today. I wanna to thank Councilman Bentner for being with us today. Mr. Jefferson, Mr. Larson and the members. Um, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Seconded. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 That's carried. We are now adjourned.